so hello everyone uh, thank you all for coming I assume that everyone is hungry right now but just please be patient I try to finish as fast as possible so everyone can go on a lunch so my name is Alexander and I am a final year computer science student and uh, work as a data scientist and a company called Synechron from Navisad uh, so this is the agenda that we are going to follow uh, during the, this presentation and let's get started. So the first slide is data wrangling with pandas but not this pandas. So what is pandas? It's open source uh, Python library that provides uh, high performance in memory data structures and data analysis tools for the Python and it's quite simple uh, and consists of two core components uh, that are series and data frames. Uh, series are essentially columns and the one dimensional uh, data structure and data frames is, is multi-dimensional table like table from rel uh, relational data uh, database and it's essentially a collection of uh, series so this is just how it looks uh, okay, this is uh, pandas are able to read the data from various sources like CSV files, JSON file, database tables, and this is uh, just simple example how to read a CSV file. Uh, function head is just uh, showing us a preview or uh, first few rows of data frame, and it's quite similar to a table in a relational database. Uh, the next step is text preprocessing. Uh, step that are a list of steps that I required for transforming text uh, from human language to machine readable format. And some of that step is uh, uh, converting text to the lower case, uh, removing all the white spaces, removing numbers, and removing punctuations, tokenizations, uh, removing stop words, which is optional, and stemming and lemmatization, which is also optional. Uh, these techniques are used to uh, just uh, uh, transform uh, words to the root or base format. For example, if you have uh, in one document uh, a word cook, in another one cooking, and on the third word cooked, uh, that will be different, but uh, if we apply stemming or lemmatization, we will all that three words uh, just cut to the cook and we will have uh, the uh, uh, same word in all three documents. Uh, so this is uh, text representation. Most common is bag of words and TFIDF, which is uh, most uh, uh, used and it's very uh, easy to understand. And another one are word embeddings, and uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, this today. Uh, it's based on neural networks and it's uh, really heavyweight models and are not so easy to understand. So let's start with bag of words model. It's extremely simple, and uh, this is the uh, these are three steps how to uh, build back of first model. The first is tech pro uh, text preprocessing, uh, which we covered uh, in the previous slide. Then is to building vocabulary and generate vectors. So assume that we have these two documents. Uh, and if we want to build vocabulary, we will uh, take all distinct uh, words from uh, a whole corpus of documents and uh, we will have, you know, five distinct words. And if is uh, uh, that word, uh, word uh, uh, in uh, the document, we'll put one. If it's not, it's zero. And uh, it's uh, simple. It's uh, this uh, is a vectorized representation of text. It's, it's and it's feasible by machine learning algorithm. Uh, what is the problem with the bag of words model is that it cannot capture the context and the uh, order in sentence uh, doesn't matter. So it's a problem. Uh, another modification of bag of words is TFIDF, uh, time frequency in inverse document frequency model, which is basically bag of words but uh, weighted. And the main goal of uh, TFIDF is to penalize uh, words that occurs uh, often. So basically, uh, for this example, if we have John, TF value for John is uh, first we have to calculate TF value, time term frequency, uh, which is tell us. Uh, uh 
uh, this uh, first document have three words and John appears uh, only one time in that sentence. In another document we don't have John so the uh, value is zero and the uh, IDF value is inverse document frequency so uh, basically the document frequency is how many uh, time uh, one term occurs in whole documents that we have and inverse that. So we have two documents and John appears uh, one time and we just take a uh, uh, natural logarithm of that and then just uh, multiply uh, TF value with IDF and we are get the weighted uh, representations of uh, of that document. Uh, next step is uh, machine learning. So scikit-learn is the most popular machine learning library uh, for the Python. It provides a wide range of supervised and unsupervised algorithms uh, that have a consistent interface and some of that algorithms are uh, linear regression, logistic regression, random forest, SVMK means, basically anyone that you will ever need. Uh, but it also supports uh, some simple neural networks, but it's not recommended to use it. You should go with TensorFlow and Keras if you are doing uh, deep learning. So <laughs> this is a meme that I created uh, last night. Uh, it's funny, uh, I will explain for the people who are not uh, uh, into machine learning. So uh, the first algorithm that everyone who starts with the data science, uh, 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 the first algorithm is a logistic uh, linear regression, uh, which solves uh, regression problem. And the second algorithm is logistic regression, but it solves classification problem. What is the difference between uh, classification in re and regression? In regression task, we are trying to predict uh, continuous variables like price based on the feature of the uh, some data point and with logistic regression or uh, which are solved classification tasks, we are trying to predict the category of some uh, data point. For example, if we have uh, email, we are just want to predict is it spam or not. So there is a big difference between these two models. Uh, the next step is uh, Kafka. I will just uh, cover the basics of Kafka. Uh, because I use it in my uh, uh, project. So Kafka is distributed streaming platform that uses publish subscribe pattern. Uh, I just took this uh, definition from their official website. It stores streams of data uh, into the topics and the topics in Kafka uh, is always multi -su -su subscribers. So the topic can have zero or uh, more consumers that are subscribed to it and pull the data. So this is the uh, basic uh, 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 structure of uh, Kafka. Uh, this is how it's simple in Python to use Kafka. Uh, it consists of the producer and the uh, consumer API. So uh, uh, producer API allows application to publish a stream uh, of records to one or more topics. And here we just instantiate Kafka producer and connect to the uh, Kafka cluster and we are ready to send uh, whatever we want. The first parameter of send method is the uh, topic that we are going to push the uh, event and the value parameter takes event that we are going to push to the uh, particular topic. Uh, the next part is the consumer API that allows application to subscribe to one or more uh, topics and uh, ingest the data from it. It's also simple and the interface is consistent like in previous uh, example and we just you know can iterate through the consumer and uh, took uh, and just you know print every uh, message that is received. Uh, Faust, uh, it's a stream processing library. I started to explore uh, stream processing last, maybe in the last two months. And uh, why I chose Faust, uh, I uh, uh, looked for Storm and Spark streaming that are uh, libraries uh, which are uh, good for stream processing, but I it's uh, really complicated to set up infrastructure and even basic Hello World project. So if I use Faust, it's extremely uh, easy. It requires only Kafka and the rest is just uh, uh, pure pure Python. So if you don't know uh, anything about stream processing, like I didn't know a few weeks ago, you just set up Kafka cluster and uh, connect to it via Faust and you're ready to do some stream processing. So this is just the basic hello world uh, example in Faust. Just import application uh, and connect to the topic you want to consume message and uh, uh, you just, uh, this is the main logic, uh, it's a stream processor function that uh, receive uh, events and do some processing uh, on them. 
uh, I don't doing nothing smart, just printing it. So uh, this is the last presentation, but I want to uh, walk you through the source code of the project. I will put it on the GitHub so you can uh, access it later. So we can leave questions after the... Just want to... So what so so what I basically did in this uh, project, um, everything is Dockerized, so you just have to to put uh, to run two commands and the uh, project will run. So uh, I made the producer that is just uh, a service that will generate some random events. Uh, I didn't mention. I just uh, I'll just generate some random events uh, like. Uh, 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 I am doing some uh, comment classification, so I will just generate event that will uh, consist user ID, IP, date, time, and the comment uh, that the user pushed to some website. And in this app file, uh, uh, we just uh, connect to the Kafka broker and push uh, uh, that events. It's just infinity loop that will just push events to the uh, particular Kafka topic. Nothing smart, but in the consumer API, we just first we first need to uh, train the linear uh, linear regression for the comment classification. So uh, first step is to uh, load all the data that we are going to use uh, with. Uh, I don't know if you see. I can zoom. So. So we first need to load the data and then to clean all the data, I just use this function that I find on the Stack Overflow to clean everything and just to uh, leave the letters and characters in the text. So the after loading the data, we are ready to vectorize it. Uh, if you use scikit-learn, you just need to call uh, one mat, uh, one class TFI DF vectorizer, which are going to create for you uh, uh, vector bendings for the world. And uh, the next step is to train the model. So uh, I used the logistic regression as a binary classifier, and I made six of them because uh, we have uh, si six classes of comments that are we can. Uh, goal is to classify toxic, sever toxic, obscene, treat, insult, and identity hate comments. And uh, I trained for e <laughs> for every one of these. I just trained linear regression to to recognize is it uh, to a comment toxic or not. And after that, we just persist the model so we can use it in uh, consumer uh, service. Uh, and this is the core logic for the steam processing. Uh, we just uh, import everything that we need in uh, class models. Uh, I define this is the event model that are going to receive. Uh, it uh, inherits Faust uh, record type for uh, automatically, uh, that are just automatically going to uh, map uh, incoming event to this class. And I just made a class called classifier that will uh, load the persistent models and vectorizer. So, and with predict method, uh, which are going to uh, receive the comment and uh, produce the uh, predictions uh, that. Uh, comment uh, with list of uh, probabilities that comment uh, uh, belongs to a specified class. And here uh, we just uh, define everything, uh, classifier, connect to the topic, and this is just the main logic. Uh, we just consume a stream of events and uh, uh, classify it, uh, get results, and just print it back. Uh, this is just basic in SAPL, uh, and uh, what we can do, uh, Faust uh, uh, has uh, integration with RocksDB, which is in-memory database uh, made by Facebook. So you can uh, persist streams in that uh, uh, RocksDB tables, which uh, you can use it just like standard Python dictionary. And uh, for example, you can do some aggregation and uh, uh you can maybe uh, on every thousand streams, you can make some statistic how many uh, comments, uh, hateful comments you get, etc. You can track uh, user activity and that's, that's basically it. So I'm going to run our application. I hope it's going to work. Uh, first thing we need to do is just to 
to run Kafka cluster. Something is wrong. <laughs> I'll just stop the containers and run it again. It should work. <laughs> yeah, I told you. Yeah, it's everything running. So uh, now we are going to run our Docker Compose file, which consists uh, of of two services, producer and consumer services. And that's it. Just a second. yeah it works so we can just now stop and try to analyze how it works so I don't know we can take some random comments oh maybe So it's hard, uh, it's not so readable, but I don't know, maybe for example this, I'm not responsible <laughs> for what this, yeah, but we can see this uh, classification results, so it's 90% that is toxic, it's obscene, it's insult, <laughs> and barely identity hate, so uh, that that's... <laughs> That's it. So maybe something. Oh. <laughs> maybe something else. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this. Uh, it's not bad, but it's it's not working as expected. So I just use some basic machine learning to uh, get things done as quickly as possible. But that's that's basically it. So does anyone have any question? Uh, thanks. Uh, just wanted to figure out. I'm, I'm trying to connect all the parts of the talk, uh, pandas from the beginning, then Kafka, then stream processing. Uh, what problem were you actually solving? Uh, What's the product uh, it here? Was and the uh, sub-question is why Kafka and stream processing? What's the volume of data you're using? Uh, can't you? Wh why didn't you just process it in memory in place where you got the data? Why do you need actually Kafka and all of this uh, heavy infrastructure? So. Okay, uh, the problem was to uh, classify comments in uh, real time, so uh, it's I didn't have to use Kafka and stream processing, but I just wanted to uh, started to learn that because if you have you know a large amount of data, we need the Kafka and uh, a real time stream uh, stream processing. So the basically I just some found random data set that consists that is labeled and consists uh, six uh, classes of comments and just solve that using uh, logistic regression. And you, you're right, we don't have to use Kafka if we have this uh, small amount of data. And it also wouldn't be able to run on this uh, <laughs> laptop if okay we have terabytes of so data. So this was a prototype for a large amount of data? Yes, yes, of okay, course. Thanks. So the, the basic use case that it solves, if you have some, I don't know, uh, uh, forum platform and uh, uh, moderators can uh, uh, label all the comments uh, manually, so this can solve this kind of problems.
Thank you, everyone.